Go. Okay, now you get to see how the front lashings are wrapped in order to protect them from abrasion. You can see that they're quite vulnerable. This one's not even tied in to the rung. It is it's one of these ties that pulls all the way back to the spring and, and has allowed me to pull these springs down, these last, the last and middle spring down into the proper elevation. So what we're going to do, we have two very long tags left. We're going to come up to this rung and we're going to... A tag is a length of rope? Yes, I call them tags, but they're, they're lengths of of twine. So when you get ready to cut a length of twine, you must do many, many lengths? I do four times, th four times the length plus an additional uh, length on either side of the spring in order to determine how long. Okay. And then I double the twine over, so I doubled that number. So I'm coming okay. over the top of the rung on the right okay. side. I see that. And I'm going to come over the over the top of all of the lashings and underneath this rung. Basically what this is doing without a knot, it's just unifying I these see that. twines to together, stabilizing them on the spring. Now, I'm going to just wrap over. It's a noose of sorts. Not terribly exciting to watch, but as you get near the end, it's kind of interesting. And because the string has been waxed, I've, I've waxed the strings numerous times in the process, the wax, some of it falls off, powders off as the strings are braided. Uh, some of it gets worked into the fiber. And so you want to continually wax the, the strings so that it doesn't end up abrading. And it also, like the other portions that I showed you, it creates tension against the other strings to where it will not uh, slip. So you can get a very, very tight tie. Almost there. Ah, see it, it wanted to open up just a little bit there. Give it a little bit of wax. This is really good Wine. I like this very much. I obtained it from a company in France. Domestic twine? I mean, it's not that it's made here in the States. It's, much of it's made in other countries. It's hit and miss as far as quality is concerned. Uh, the quality has dropped considerably over the years, and so they want to open up considerably when you're doing t ties like this. So obtaining a twine that is very tightly twisted initially is important. And now, where, see, what type of twine is this again? This is flax. It's a flax twine. I've been looking for a great hemp twine. I like using hemp fiber, but I've not been able to come up with a great hemp so far. Okay, so we're almost there. You can see it's cinching down right around those nails. I may have gone one one orbit too far, maybe, maybe not. Let me see. Nope, we're good. Okay, so see how this moves? Those lines can no longer be abraded. And this is where there's a great deal of stress because people typically sit down on the front edge of of a um, chair or sofa and it collapses the springs and guess what happens? Every time the orbit of that spring comes down it hits the twine. And what will it do? Eventually it'll just wear it out and release the entire course of springs. This protects it and um, minimizes that risk. Okay now we're going to go to tack. Okay I'm <laughs> cheating here. And I'm going to place that tack 
right, right there. See, that's why it's difficult to do it with these nails because you have to get so much downward pressure. On some pieces, you might want to pilot your hole with a um, your tack hole or your nail hole with a uh, drill bit just so that you don't split substrate. So what are you doing there? I'm going to just do Wait, uh, a hitch, just, just a loop, just a very simple loop. Get your finger out of the way so they can see. Great. And I'm going to cinch it over, tighten it, and then you can orbit your string around. Now, having your string come back this direction is important because if you do this, you nail it down, and your string comes back over the top of the head of the nail, the risk of it being cut over time is likely or probable. Okay. It means the same thing. Okay, I'm going to tack it down. And now we get to establish the elevation of the front spring. Okay. I like to crisscross my lines. I, I can borrow tension from either side of the um, of the spring. So I'm going to come over top. Actually, went, went the wrong way. Now my elevations have been pretty much established. I don't want my spring to roll down this direction. I don't want the front edge to bull nose. And you'll see why later as the pod goes on because the pod will be relatively flat and have a concise edge roll. And if my spring rolls down, it's going to leave a trough, an empty trough. So I want that to be very, very um, flat in elevation. So there we go. I'm going to go back under to hitch it. And then I'm just going to create a simple looped knot. And that knot, this, the string, pulls back underneath and through. So it fills that space in between these two hitches. You see that? Mm-hmm. Kind of nice. I'm going to crisscross. Now it is true that the abrasion of these two strings crisscrossing can wear. But I've found that that the the gain is worth the risk because if we crisscross our our vertical twine, it keeps the twine from if it's going straight up, it can start to migrate over in this direction. But if we crisscross, they will end up pushing themselves together and stay in the middle. Oh, so it stabilizes it. And so it stabilizes. Hmm. I have not seen any one tie spring, so I've had to learn this by practice and, um, and seeing other, other craftsmen's spring ties when they've been opened up. I mean, I have seen other upholsters tie springs, that, that's true, but nothing in, in the realm of conservation or restoration that uh, rivals this type of work. So observing other methods is quite useful. Um, I'm certain that there are things to be learned about this that uh, I have not seen. But these ideas are really a culmination of a, a number of um, good spring ties that I have observed while um, taking them apart and then my own adaptations over the years. There we go. We are tight. So now I'm going to unite these two strings and as you can see I've allowed this orbit to just simply be free. We want this spring to, to act almost semi-independently of, of the rest. And so I've left this open and I'm going to... Why do you want it to act semi-independently? Because I don't want 
the other springs, when this front edge collapses, I don't want them to all pull forward. Over time, it causes the springs to be trained in that direction. So this one is obviously going to come forward regularly. And so what I'm trying to do is allow it to move somewhat independently of the others. Okay. So let's see if this actually does the trick. I'm going to pull this tightly back against one another and against the spring. And again, just a simple overlap loop. You see that? Mm -hmm. Your f hands become very, very strong over a period of time. You start to find out that you can, can hold things under tension with one finger. Now, I'm going to unite these two. You can see the spring wants to move up. And there are ways to mitigate that. We can, we could, instead of going directly to the spring, we could do this. Oh, I see what you're doing. You're coming down we can wrap. on another. And that will allow it to still move. In fact, let's do that. That's kind of a good idea. It can move and it will wear, but this double course should stay pretty much in position, especially once we unite it with the other. So I think one of the things that still I'm not understanding and if I don't understand it, I don't think other people will. So you talk about having this be independent, and yet you will be lashing it to the other. I will be, but I'll be lashing it loosely. I see. I won't, it okay. won't be under the same tension okay. as the uh, rest of the springs relative to. So it'll tight. keep it from really flopping forward, right. but it won't keep it tight. Right. Okay. So let's see. How do I want to do this? I'm going to come down. And see, you have to think about it. Maybe. Yes. And then we're just going to back tie it. Just makes for a fairly thick knot. And sometimes that it's not pretty, but it gets the job done. Okay. And then come back with our final tie. And you're wrapping on both sides of that yep. other tie. Yep. It's not imperative, but I have a lot of, of string here to deal with. And I'm just going to come back around and loop it along that line. I like to double, sometimes triple loop, as it creates tension on the string. Get one string against the other to where it cannot back itself off over time. And then, voila. You have a piece, a front spring that can move semi independently. You can see that this kind of floats around along this line. It can move, and yet the elevation is, is, is correct. Can collapse in front without taking the other springs along with it. Hmm, great. It will become more apparent once the um, uh, what this does once the um, pod begins to go on the edge roll.